Hello and welcome to the video. Um, today I'm going to show you how I make piped cushions. As always, there are lots of different ways you can do them. There are different styles to the corners, there are different methods of joining the pipe in, different methods of when you overlock it. So I'm going to show you a couple of methods that I use quite frequently and I'll explain why. And So I'm going to do two cushions today to show you a good selection of those methods. The first one is a pretty standard cushion and probably the one that most people are familiar with or would do by choice in a professional workroom for sure. And that's with bias cut piping and putting the join for the piping at the bottom centre of the cushion. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to overlock the back panel first, but I'm not, I'm going to leave the front panel until I put the piping on. So I'm going to put the piping on in place, make the join here, because that always ends up quite tatty once you've done it. Then I'm going to overlock round it, which finishes off this bottom edge really nicely. So when you're opening and closing the zip, you've got a neat edge. And the only other difference with this cushion is it's got rounded corners. So I'm going to snip and curve the piping round, which you can do much more easily with a bias cut piping than a straight cut piping. Oh, and, and also, sorry, um, is I'm going to put a standard zip in, not an invisible zip. Personally, I think once you've piped a cushion, it tends to hide the zip anyway. So you can put an invisible zip in by all means that's a proper job but for a standard piped cushion I see no problem using um, a standard zip so I've got my continuous zip here my zip ends and I've also got my piping cord here okay so that's one and then the other cushion I'm going to do is a square cornered one with straight cut piping. Now the only, really the reason why you would cut piping on straight rather than bias, bias being the first choice, even if you're doing a square cut cushion, just tends to look a bit better. But the reason you might choose to do it is if the pattern is a particular direction or something you want to, if it's a stripe and you want to keep the stripe in, in, in line rather than having a sort of barley twist effect, or or if you've not got much fabric left because <laughs> um, it takes up much less if you've just got a little thin strip of fabric left um, sometimes all you can get is a straight piece rather than cutting lots of little tiny sections of bias cut and having a million joins which never looks nice um, you can though still join it as if you were joining bias piping which is what I'm going to do. And the reason for that is the, the joints tend to be less bulky. You haven't got, if you join it normally, you've got seam on top of seam on top of seam. Whereas if you cut it on the bias, you're, the, none of the seams are quite landing on top of each other because they're all at an angle. And then once I've made up the pipe and I'm going to overlock it, and then I'm going to overlock both panels. So it's a bit more of a standard cushion, this. But the difference with it is I'm going to put the join in the bottom, near the bottom corner, rather than on the, on the bottom edge in the middle, I'm going to put it near the bottom corner on one side, but I'm going to still angle join it. And I find the join at the bottom corner, it should be, I mean, the join should be as good as the other joins anyway in your piping, but I find a join in the bottom corner barely shows because it's always at that point where either the cushion's slumped and it's got those little creases in it anyway or it's in the corner of a sofa or it's behind another cushion or it's it's very rare that you see you really get a good sight of this this bottom corner anyway so it's a good option and then it leaves the bottom edge with a neat overlocked piece of piping and a neat overlocked edge of the cushion so if you're open and closing the zip you've got a nice finish so that's the second one i'll do that after and again same zip piping so we'll get started on this one. So the first job is to overlock around the back piece of this bias cut pipe cushion. And I've chosen this uh, for the back as opposed to this. 
Because this just seemed bright and with this sort of flower burst here and there are more colours on that panel so it seemed a better choice for the back. Uh, so it's just simply a case of overlocking round. Okay, so there's my overlock panel. I'll just put that to one side for now. And I've got my front piece, my piping, so I'll make the piping up first. And I'll just pay a bit of attention to the joins, really, and, and which bits of pattern I join together. Only because like that's got a very heavily solid bit of purple there. If I was to join that to this bit here which is really pale for instance you're going to see a really obvious line of the difference between the two even though you're only seeing a small bit of the pipe and you you will still see that so I'll, I'll choose a different part of the pattern for that but I see I spy two bits that are, are nice and subtle together so I'll join those first So just angling the two pieces together and if you overlap rather than doing, if you do that and then join it, you'll end up with an, an off-centered piece. So you have to imagine your stitch line and take that up to the top there. So you'll have these two little ears sticking out, one at the top, one at the bottom, and then you sew down between the two. Okay, so that's one join. And then the next one, I might choose this bit actually, because what I'll end up with, if I just mock that up, if I join that like that, the only bit I need to be concerned with is this middle bit here. Because that's the only bit that's going to show on the outside of the cushion. The rest is going to be all inside in the seams. But you can fold it if you like, just to, to double check. So you can see that, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be much less obvious that there's a join there between those two bits of pattern. So I'll do that, I think. So I tend not to um, come away and snip the thread. I just carry on onto the next piece. I do um, do a bar tack top and bottom, just a little one, just to hold it really in place. But even that's not that necessary. So those are my, I just happen to have three pieces. So those are my three pieces done. Now I'll snip off, snip between these. When you're doing lots of piping, and you use this method and you just keep going and join and join and it's much quicker to snip all the threads off and just snip 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 all the bits apart so there we go and then i won't bother taking it to the iron i'll just press those open or even press them open as i'm making the piping up so now i need to change my foot to a half foot or a piping foot whatever you're using on your machine um, I tend to use a half foot for pretty much everything <laughs> for the zip, for the piping. Um, even once I've, if I'm doing a lot of cushions, I'll just start off using this. I'll put it on straight away and do these joins, initial joins as well uh, with a half foot. It's just as easy to sew with it than not. Now I need my piping cord. So I lay my piping cord in, fold it over, and just let it 
sit near the end it doesn't have to be perfectly at the end or sticking out at the end because you're going to end up snipping a bit of it off anyway to be honest and then making sure the piping's pushed up into the fabric well not really tight but well enough nice snug but not tight and then lay it in the middle pinch the piping just fold it over make sure it's in there and then just machine up against it and what you want to try and do is rather than let the machine control how this fabric behaves if you do what can sometimes happen is it'll push this um, forward and you'll end up with sort of twisting piping not the end of the world because you can strain it out as you put it in sew it onto the cushion anyway but just it's just harder to handle so it's worth um, keeping control of it at this point so I tend to lay it down I hold it firm with this hand here and then I don't let it creep forward I don't let any any, any uh, sort of extra fabric build up so it, it tends to stay pretty flat like that and then when I get to the join um, you can if you've got a chunky fabric trim these joins right down to just probably you know four or five mil each side of a seam allowance but I'll leave this because it's pretty flat as it is and then when, as you go over the seam just pay a bit more attention to how close you are just make sure you're snug up against it because it's a little bit thicker there And then if you want to you can snip that off um, but I tend to leave it on because it saves a little bit of piping not much but it does save a bit okay so now this fabric does have a direction and it's a, it is a very abstract floral so I'm pretty sure that's its direction upwards this will be the bottom so you can if you want just mark your center so by folding it or marking it or putting a pin in it like that so you know where you are and then just undo the end in fact i'm gonna no that's okay just, again just be mindful of which bit of the pattern you're starting with because that's going to have to join up eventually to the other end so you want to pick a sort of not too dramatic part of the pattern i think this is fine actually because it's whilst it's very heavily purple there it's pretty generalized quite bland there so i think that probably work quite well um, and i and you want to give yourself about from the cut back side of the bias about that much to work with so I would start with that in the middle there so the middle of the piping in the middle come back a bit to give yourself a seam allowance and then start about there and then you're machining this obviously right through You've got this stitch line already as a guide and you want to sew either right on top of that or even just inside of it and then you'll know that that stitch line won't show when you've sewn it like that. You, you know, it'll be covered. I've actually got quite a wide seam allowance here but I've left it that way then I know I can put it through the overlocker and it, it'll cut it. You'll have something to cut when it's going through the overlocker. And then as you go around the corner, as Mr. As you go around the corner you want to snip it. So I tend to put about five or six snips in. What I tend to do with the scissors, although be very careful, I know how sharp these scissors aren't actually. And I sort of leave that 
but I don't like really, really sharp scissors because they can get you into problems. <laughs> so I know that I can cut that. It won't cut through this fabric unless it was something like a really fine silk or something. So I can use that as a buffer and I'll know as, as that stops me from cutting, it leaves me a, a good few mil away from the stitch line. So I'll never cut through the stitch line using that method. But by all means, don't do that. <laughs> you just, you know, be more cautious and do a, a proper snip. So you're a bit more controlled if you're a bit, uh, you're not too confident doing that. And then lay your piping round the curve using the edge of the flange of the piping and the edge of the curve you've cut to give yourself that curve. And once you've got it laid in place, take a bit of time to get it just nice. Hold it really well with your fingers and then just fold this piping down out the way just so you can see the stitch line and it's not and it's not your needle is not going to catch the edge of it. And then just if you can keep it in one swift go, just work your way around like that. And then carrying along this side. So same thing again, starting about there, ending about there. Really the curved part is really where you want to put the snips. And yeah, five tenths seems to be enough for me there, like that. So again, lining this up with the corner, the curved edge. And like I said at the beginning of the video, you can still do squared edges with the, you know, with bias cut. I do this, but I don't need to snip those off because I'm running it through the overlock after. It's just have it. I see something that it wants snipping off, I'll snip it off. Okay, so now when we get to meeting up with the other end, you've obviously got to make sure that you're, you've got enough to work with to overlap. And you've got to cut it at, a, at an angle as well. So what I tend to do is I fold this back just as a guide. I look for this, sh the, the shortest point, which is here. And then running up there, I know if I come this way by the seam allowance amount, so say about half an inch, and cut that off. You can cut it straight at this point. I know I'm going to have plenty. And then just undo the stitch line back. And come a little bit further and then from the machine and then what you want to do is join the two pieces like that so the two pieces basically form a right angle but then you're sewing at an angle down there this one you've already got this cut end so you've got that as a guide so if you can see that there's your straight piece if 
sorry how to show this. I tend to just <laughs> do it. There we go. And lay it on like that and then you want to stitch down there. So I'll just test whether, the, see that looks a bit loose. I actually, I was a bit generous with what I cut off. So I'm just going to uh, give myself a better guide. More like that. So again, you can change to the full foot again if you need to, but I just do it with a half foot. Right, it saves a job changing it again. Okay, so once you've sewn it, just pull it tight and just make sure that you've got enough tension in it. And lay the piping down into it just to see it. There we go. So I know that that's going to sew in quite nicely and flat. And then trim off the seam, seam allowance first. And I'll trim this one back a bit more. It's easier to work with. And then there's also a million methods of, well, not a million, but a few methods of how you join the piping, the cord itself. What I tend to do is I lay the two pieces side by side like that. I don't pull them tight. I just let them lie comfortably like that. And then I pick up both pieces together And I snip. I try not to get the, the join directly on the seam either. I get it just to one side. It's just what you know, all those things happening in, at once in one place just tends to show. And then the ends sort of squish together rather than go perfectly together. Because if you if they're perfectly together at the start and then you put a bit of tension on this as it's sewn, it'll come apart. So this just gives it a bit of ease. And then fold over. Come start back where you finished off. And then just open up again and just check that this piping is pushed into the crease, well into the crease, and this, the joined edges aren't all sticking out. And that they're nicely sort of tucked in. Okay, and then also just, and obviously make sure your seam's opened out inside. It's not, uh, laying to one side. And then make sure you've got a nice straight line coming down here. Sometimes it's easy to, to forget that bit and you get a bit of a kink in it. And then finish off that sewing. So there we go. So that's the join on the bottom. What I'll do now is I'll overlock this and tidy up all this edge. So we'll do that now. And see, I didn't use all that piping. I've got that bit left, so there's no point wasting all that cord. I'll just pull that off, throw that away. And that's ready for the next cushion. Okay, so I need to overlock this. Okay, so this is the bottom edge where we did our join. And what I'll do is I'll start the overlocking on any side but that bottom edge, because you can never get a perfectly neat overlock finish where the two overlocked ends meet. So I'll start on this side. I'm lifting the foot up first, make sure it's under. And then keeping the foot up against the piping cord here. I just 
follow the shape round and I'll just follow this this edge around here and it's chopping off the excess as it goes and then as you get to these little bits just make sure they're pressed down because they tend to, sometimes they can push back in, under the like the uh, overlocker foot and push the bottom Same with these snips that you don't get them folded over. And then overlap the overlock join. Where this, I started here, I've overlocked and then just tapered off there. Okay, so that's much neater now. I'll just get rid of these thread ends. And then that one end of overlocking. So now we're ready for the zip to go in the bottom. And I put my zip in first and then sew the back on. So first of all we need an end on here. Like everything else, there's loads of ways of doing this as well. <laughs> but having done a million of them in my life, I can just do them without any tools. And then to get the length right, I just make it the length between the piping. It seems to be the simplest way of doing it. Um, I'll chop some off anyway. So I'll get the length to about there. Snip that off. There we go, got our zip ready. So still with a half foot on. turn it over so I've got the back of the zip and then I lay it sort of on top of the so that the coil of the zip is on top of the piping sorry about my nail varnish bag I can never it never lasts more than a day in the workroom um, so that it lays it on top of the piping it can it tends to roll a bit off to the side that's fine See, once I've laid it on, and then once I push in with my fingers like that, it tends to roll over, which is fine. What you'd need to avoid, though, is, is catching, as the needle comes down, is catching this edge here with the, with the needle. And then just letting the tape of the zip run straight off the edge. Don't bring it round curved like that. Just let it run straight. Much easier to put on. And... You don't need that bit anyway. You'll see when I come to put the back piece on. And then just start, you can back tack there if you want, but there's no need. And then once we've done a couple of inches, so you can close the zip past, just lift your foot, and just carefully run the zip past. Make sure it doesn't fly off the end. And then it gets a bit easier to sew once you've got the zip closed. So again, laying, but the unfortunate thing is you're doing it a bit more blind this time. You can't really see where you are. So you, you have to feel your way. So laying the zip, centre of the zip now on top of the piping. And then push in with your nails. You can feel where the piping, piping is. And then just sew hard up against that piped edge. And then 
Same thing at the other end, just run it off straight. Stick the threads. So you'll see that it's in there. In fact, I can put left a bit showing, stitch showing there, so I'm just going to tighten that up a bit actually. So I'm going to leave the zip here. carry on I just might as well just run it down stitching make the stitching look a bit better rather than just doing that one little bit of stitching right so there we go and then the back part goes on that's where I overlock the overlocker and again, that and that could be the bottom. I'll take this as the bottom. So lay those, lay the bottom on the top. Mm -hmm. Just make sure the corners are matching, the edges are matching, and then flip it over and do the same thing going the other way. This time you don't have to worry about sewing up against the piping cord but again just so just taper in from straight the only thing you need to be cautious of this time is that you're keeping all your edges in line if you want to put a, like a pin in down here just to make sure you don't nothing sort of creeps um, creeps ahead of you by all means do. So then I line the the edge of my zip with just with the edge of the fabric. I hold it, I f f just hold this back so I don't catch it with a needle and then I sew. You'll see on the zip there's a there's a sort of a bit of a line the, the coils are here, you obviously can't sew there, but you can sew just the other side of this stitch here. That's what I tend to aim for. But it actually, it doesn't really, on this side of the zip it doesn't matter because you're going to create a flap to go over this anyway. It's just to get it held. And when you get to about here, just make sure the needle's down and open the zip past just makes it easy to sew okay so now we've got what looks like a very obvious <laughs> zip well that will be covered eventually with a flap and I'll show you how to form that now this is to me this is the this is the best method of finishing the cushion. And then we want to finish off the, the ends of the zip now and close the cushion up. And the best way I find is to, if you fold that up, this side of the zip against the pipe and just fold it back, hold it with your finger and then lay it next to the other edge. Basically what's happening is, it might be easier to show at the other end actually, is this zip wants to naturally fold and it wants to flip like that because the piping's in the way. It won't, it won't go the other way because it's up against the piping. So it actually wants to sort of flip like that. Well, let it do that because that's what's going to form um, the flap to cover it. So at the other end where the zips are open, you've sort of got to just recreate that. So fold that one up, lay it next to that, like that. Hold it firm and then put it in the machine 
at right angles to the seam. And you're sewing on the pipe side of the fabric because you've got this stitch line already to follow and it also tends to keep the tension much better than if you try and stitch it on the other side. What tends to happen is this will pull and creep and it's less stable. You, tend to, you fight a bit more to keep the edges lined up. So we can sew now right up to, up to the piping and you've got these stitch lines to guide you but also if you feel your way with the with your nails make sure that you the piping is pointed inwards it's not sort of flipping back otherwise you'll you'll catch it and then back tack and do a couple of stitches I lost me. like that And that'll give you a really strong end to the zip. It'll finish off, it'll close it and stop the end from the zip ends from being able to come off the end. But also it gives you a really um, strong uh, uh, end to the opening. So if somebody's being a bit rough with the cushion, trying to ram in a, a cushion that's too big, for instance, and they're really stretching the opening, it won't tend to, to rip. So now turn and then just make sure you've got all your edges laid together and nicely in line and then just pushing the piping away from you just making sure it's pushed out the way so you're not going to catch it with a needle just follow the, that stitch line from earlier around keeping that nice curve and keeping these edges lined up now when you get to there if you've got any sort of slight difference like that what you can do is you just keep pull your two corners together so they do line up push your piping out of the way hold this really firm and sew down and then you can ease out that that tightness same thing so you've got a slight difference and that all that is is from is because this is stitched with the piping and the, un the underside isn't so you just want to ease it back in so go to the corner first don't just carry on sewing here before you and then hold it firm again you can put a pin in if you want but I find if I hold that corner firm I've got a better finish because I've got the whole of this side now to, to lose any tightness in. So, same thing, allow that zip to fold that way, like that. So this is your back, that's your piped front. So this zips flopping this way, flipping up like that. And then the last bit, just find that little root through with your nail. Push, it, push the piping out of the way, come round this corner until you pretty much until you come start getting going straight. Stop with the needle down, turn, just make sure your zips well out of the way. Where it was then, wasn't it? And then sew up and down that seam a couple of times and snip. So there we go. So now what we're going to do now is turn the cushion. Uh, now if you want to snip at this point, you can do. I tend to, and that, because 
what I tend to do is I want to snip off, I put the first snip here and I, it gets rid of the end of this zip which is hard and plasticky and tends to spoil the curve. So I tend to put a snip in here first, like that, and then one round the corner. So we've got one on each side then. Just be careful you don't go too far in. Leave it a good few mil away from that stitch line. So you need a good control. It's actually why I don't I prefer not to have scissors that are too sharp. Because if you if you just lost if you just overcut a bit, you'd be straight into that seam. So into the stitch line. This is the hardest bit because you're snipping through that plastic as well and the zip. There we go. So now the best bit. Open that zip and then turn it through. And then as you turn it, you can make sure these are folded down like nicely rather than just sort of squishing them because they tend to get a bit lumpy then. Worth taking a bit of care over them. Okay, so if I close the zip, still doesn't look so good because you can still see all the zip, but what you'll notice if you turn it over to the back, you've got a fold form in here. If you just push that zip down and then let this naturally fold over where it wants, you'll see a flap form. If you want to press it, you can do, just be, care be careful you don't melt your zip, but um, I tend to find doesn't you don't really need to and actually it's better not to if you can avoid it because if you do it, you press it afterwards once you've stitched it but before you stitch it you can give yourself a bit of ease uh, now you do want to put a few pins in here just to hold it but I'm just going to put the pin through and make sure I catch just that side flange of the zip rather than going right through so it really is just picking. You can, if you just sort of pick away as you put the pin in, you can uh, feel you pick up that flange of the zip. Now open the zip back up. Just check you've not got, yeah, and just check you've caught the bit of zip you want. It's held in place. And then if you've got an adjustable foot you might you can at this point shift it across to the other side because you want to be able to sew up against the zip edge on this side so normally you would put it under like that but this half foot's too far away from the zip um, but I tend to not bother <laughs> I tend to just put it in the other, the other way and it works just as well, to be honest. You've just got to be careful you don't catch the other side of the cushion. But you've got to do that anyway, even if you had the, you know, the half foot going the other way. So I tend to put it under like that. Come down. Now I can feel the zip edge here. So I tend to do my flat a bit less than half an inch, perhaps a centimetre, nine mil. And what you can't do is sew right up to here because there's just too much bulk to even attempt to get a nice neat start. So don't bother, just start where it wants to start and it's usually a, a couple of centimetres away. It really doesn't matter that you've not, that you're not uh, sewing right up to that point. It can't do anything, it can't go anywhere. So 
we'll see in a minute. So just make sure your threads are behaving themselves. Do a couple of back stitches and then very carefully just keeping control of this nicely. So what I tend to do is I hold this edge down as I sew and then just very carefully keeping a nice parallel stitch line come up to the other end. And as I do, I'll start to sort of fold that back now. And when you get to the other end, you've got the zip there as well, so it gets even harder. So just sew as far as you can, basically. Make sure your zips not being pulled in, that you've still got a nice parallel line to the stitch line and the flap. And then until your foot hits this bit here, and then just back tack from there, a few either side. And then snip your threads. Close, is it? And your flap's done. So there we go, it's nice and concealed. And like I said, it tends not to matter that it's not an invisible zip because the piping just sort of covers that bit anyway. And once the cushion's in as well, it, it, it's, it closes even more like that just with the force of the cushion inside it closes that little flap up and then I would I would just manipulate these corners a bit make sure they're nice and neat and we're done there we go so that's number one so that's bias cut piping Join at the bottom, uh, the piping put onto the front panel first before it's overlocked. Uh, what else? And curved corners. So we'll move on to number two now. Okay, so on to cushion number two now. Um, this is the one with the straight cut piping. So that's my pieces here. And I'm going to make the piping up first. I'm going to overlock it. I'm going to overlock both pieces of the cushion and also we've got the square corners so I'll show you how I fit, how I work my way around a square corner as well. So I shall make the piping up first. I'm still going to join this as if it was were bias. I, I find it just as easy to do but by all means join it straight if you want just a straight seam like that. On, you know thinnish fabrics and actually this one's probably still fine it'll look okay I just find it's a neater join if you overlap it it's just more it just doesn't show as much overlap it like that and then stitch in that corner I've got my half foot on so I'm missing a bit right over to the opposite corner to there That. Hold that over and then the next one. So that's a pretty good match, that piece. And then snip off this seam allowance. So there we go, we've got good joins. So like we did on the other one, just open out the seam. Lay 
in the piping. up against it well, again quite snug but not really tight and then when you get to this seam just make sure it's open and that the piping's well flat against the edge fold that over so that it's quite tight in there and then stitch over that seam so you'll be stitching first over this bit and then you'll feel it the seam under here because you've uh, made it at an angle, so you'll feel like you're stitching over it twice. Okay. So that's the piping ready. And then we're just going to overlock that with the two pieces of fabric. So again, I've left it on the roll of piping, just my, my personal preference. So I tend to end up catching these bits, so I'll just <laughs> snip them off now, just roughly. I cut the corners off anyway, so they're going to go at some point, but I find that they get caught if I'm not careful. Okay, so as before, just decide which I'm going to have as the front or the back. Actually, whilst that's got a bit more dramatic pattern on it, that one's got all the colours on it. So I'll choose this one, it's a bit different. And the other one. Um, oftentimes you'll pattern match each cushion panel. So you'll you'll have the same part of the pattern in each cushion. It just tends to look more coordinated. Um, but these were just samples, so we'll just I just cut them any old willy-nilly way. Okay. So we're gonna do the joints and that this I'm gonna choose this is my bottom edge. That tends to be the direction of the pattern. So I'm going to put the join here. Um, and I've got, this is pipe now. So we've just piped it, but I'm just going to cut, up, cut it back again. So I just need to trim the piping stitching back about three inches. And also, make stitching. Okay, so I've cut that back, uh, the stitching back, and left it open. And then I'm going to lay the piping on about there, because the join's going to end up probably across here. So I want to start well away from that. So I'll probably start about here. So just do a couple of bar tacks, and just the needle down. Because we're doing a nice sharp square corner this time, I'm going to cut a snip just straight across towards the stitch line. Um, and I want to come up here the same distance as this seam allowance here, this hem allowance, seam allowance here. So it's about there. So make a snip. Then sew down to that snip 
just if you just open open it up you can find it again make sure the needles down turn the cushion turn the piping and then just push the piping back like that and fold it down and it'll just give you a bit more room to manoeuvre up against the pipe and otherwise you can end up catching the edge of the pipe and then, or not getting a really neat square corner and then stitch down and you've got the stitch line as well to guide you so then we'll come across the bottom now and then so the same thing make that snip straight across stopping short by couple of mil, two to three mil from the stitch line. You don't need to do it right up to it. It will ease. And then with the needle down, turn, push the piping up that way and fold it down there. So you, you can reveal that stitch line, get a nice straight run down. And down the other side. join right on this corner but it should matter not and actually if that was a straight join it would be harder to get this it wouldn't look quite as neat but we've got those angled joins so it just gives us a bit more okay so now I'm back down to the, where they meet I want to overlap this, double the amount of the whole width of the piping. So taking a square there, there, I'm going to cut that there, straight through everything. Get rid of that, don't need it. I'm just going to wind the piping up out of the way. And then do the same to this end of the piping as you did to the other. So strip back the stitching to about three inches. The stitch line as well. And then just come down a little bit further. Come off out of the way. And then, same as before, make a right angle with those two ends. And sew down corner to corner. Sewing at an angle. Make sure your piping ends are out of the way. I can feel the one underneath is out of the way. It's just this top one keeps insisting on pinning back. There we go. Then just double check, just test it first by pulling it straight. And I know that's going to lay nice and flat once I've trimmed everything back, got the piping in the right position. Trim the excess off. Open that seam out. Lay the two ends together. Not, don't pull them tight, just let them rip, sort of sit comfortably and relax together. Lift them, hold them both up and snip through the, both of them and you'll get a, a decent match then. And 
and just let them sort of two ends mingle together the threads and there's ways of doing this differently you can strip back half of this cord and half of this cord so that you, you get an overlap like that and twist it together which is a nice way of doing it but personally I don't feel the need but a lot of people do it and if you get used to it you can get quick at it it's just one of those things you just end up doing but I tend to just make sure that the ends are nicely together pushed well in start back where we left off just spend a bit of time getting this nice and straight there and so down to meet up with the other stitch line okay so whilst you join this join section hasn't got any overlock on it you can take it back to the overlocker and just run over this bit but then you're sewing you're overlocking both layers it's really hard to just overlock one layer um, and you, it's hard to start and stop neatly like i said so personally i find it's better to just leave it like that just trim it get rid of all the tatty bits make it nice and neat And because we put it on the corner, on the side corner anyway, you, you're very rare, you're never going to see it. Certainly not from the outside, so it's only if you ever open it on the inside. And the bottom edge is a nice straight run, clean, neat, no joins, nicely overlocked. And that's the bit that's going to get the most opening and most views or opening and closing, most use. Okay, so now. We want to put the zip in, so same as before. Zip on, on first. Lay it between the piping. So I'm going to cut it about there. So I'll zip. Match those two ends up. Make it easier. Okay. And then turn it. This is our bottom edge. That's where our join is. So we want to sew the zip down here. I tend to start at the open end first. And I want to sew down to about there um, with the zip open, then close it up and carry on with the zip closed. Much easier to sew that way. So starting with the edge of the zip roughly lined up with the inside edge of the pipe in. I just let it sit on top of the, the coil part of the zip, sitting on top of the pipe in and then just sort of push in with my fingernails so I can feel the edge of the piping where the stitch lines are uh, that we've just made and what tends to happen is the zip ends up vertical so what you've got to be really careful of is that as the needle comes down you don't catch this edge because the zip will then catch that. You want to, you only want to make sure you're stitching down here. So just being cautious, just, just only for this first few inches. Just hold the zip back with I use my fingernails. It's very close to the needle though, so just be careful. So down to about there. Should do. Put the needle down and then 
just go past with it with the zip just be really careful you don't fly off the end with it it's easy to just just go like that so now we can do the rest of the zip with it closed which is much easier to sew so again sitting the, the zip center on top of the piping and then pushing against the piping edge with your nails to feel your way and then sew it and just try and keep a tight a tightness up against the piping you're not too far away otherwise you'll reveal all, all those stitch lines and when you get to the other end this bit of the piping tends to sort of push back like that so like you did when you put it on so do the opposite pull that down push that back so that you can see that stitch line you can get a nice straight run to the end okay. so there we go there's a zip in place on one side Now we need to put the back on, just decide which way up it goes. That looks like the bottom. So it wants to go on like that. And then working on sewing from the zip side, I find is easier. First thing to do is to line up these corners. So you know that you're starting in the right place. And then just simply sew down here doesn't have to be a, this doesn't have to be a perfect stitch straight stitch line it's just to hold it in place while you while we're sewing it now but you know you may as well make a, a good job of it i tend to sew quite close to the zip coil so just again checking these corners will match up when we get to the other end what I tend to do is I hold those together now and then just making sure that the zip, the edge of the zip is lined up with the edge of the fabric. Just come down the rest of the and the same thing just with the needle down, take the zip past. You might have to wiggle it a bit as you to get it past so that it's open and then just finish off that last bit. Okay, now staying on this same side, on the piped side, you, you now want to finish off each end and close up the cushion. So you're starting at the open end of the zip. What you want to do is let the zip fold up like that on this side and let it meet, sit against the coil of the other side. And it'll feel quite flat, and that's the idea. If I show you on the other side, it'll make more sense because it's closed here. It'll you see it's naturally wanting to flop that way like that you see that now that's what you want to achieve but where it's open you've just got to sort of allow it to you've got to sit it in the right position okay and then just make, holding that firm, just sort of pressing there again with your fingernail to feel that stitch line, that valley where you, the edge of the piping is. And then stitching from the edge down towards the piping. You've got stitch lines to guide you, so just to the stitch line and then back tack. I tend to do that for just a few times and then turn it and then you want to come around this but this piping is sort of buckling inside here now sort of in, in it 
in its own way. So you've got to manipulate it a bit and push it and pull it as you want it to get it out of the way so that you can sew right up against it on that stitch line and get a really neat corner. Keep the needle down. And what I tend to do is I push my finger in here and roll the pipe and back out of the way and then get my fingernails in again and make sure that the piping isn't underneath where I'm going to stitch where the cut so the cord itself isn't underneath and then sewing on the uh, pipe side again just makes it easier for ease you don't get any uh, gain I find and so the same at the other end I'm, what I'm doing is I'm inside here now pushing this out of the way both ways you have to manipulate it a bit sort of mould it needle down turn it So when you're coming up this other side now, you want to make sure when you get to the top that your zip's in the right position. So just create that fold again. So it's this bit here wanting to be folding up the zip like that. Hold it firm. Just run your fingers down, make sure the piping's pushed in towards the inside of the cushion. And run up. And again, when you get to this top corner, just manipulate that cord again to make sure it's out of the way. And then sew along, same as you did on the other side, so it's probably just over an inch from the, the actual pipe in itself. Like that. Turn and sew and cross back. Being careful not to sew into the piping. Right, there we go. So we're going to turn it through now. So, but first, I'm going to snip these corners off. It looks very brutal, but I'm simply just going to cut right across the corner. I'll let, I'm staying away from this stitch line here by about probably two to three mil and that can vary with depending on the fabric if you've got a particularly soft fabric or you know fabric that frays really easily you can stay further away but when it's a sort of quite a stiff linen like this you want to be quite uh, brutal with the amount that you cut off okay so we're ready to turn so open up the zip so it appears this camera ran out and I, th it, I think it showed me sewing this first corner uh, but will have not shown me sewing the finishing off but so basically when you get round to this second corner you do the same as this so you make sure that the zip close that back up is Flopped, sort of folded like that. Lay it flat, come round. It's the same as the zip we did in the bias cut piped um, cushion. So you could always refer to that earlier in this video. And then all I've done on from that is to snip these corners off straight across. So now we can. Right, 
Correct. Carry on. Right, so I'm just going to close this zip just so I uh, get these corners. And I tend to pull the corners out a bit more, just manipulate that seam inside so that it's nice and square and flat. So there we go. So the last bit, all we need to do is to create the flap for the zip. Because at the moment you'll see that you can the zip sort of gape and you can see quite a lot of it at the moment. So as we did in the first one, turn it over, just fold it, let it fold down and then let this fold over the top naturally where it wants to fold naturally. You can even keep to the uh, the thread of the weave to give you a nicer crease if you've cut your cushions to the thread, obviously, <laughs> which isn't always possible, especially on printed fabrics. It's fallen nicely like this time, and then a few pins. So I'll put one near the end, just through the face the back fabric actually and then just catch in the flange of the zip <coughs> that's all and don't go right through because you're going to open up this zip and then just open up the zip and check make sure that, that you've caught it and you've not gone straight through so there we go we've caught that What I do is I put it under, you're just using the same half foot, I don't bother changing it to the, the foot that goes on the other side. I just find it's one less job to do. I leave it in, I've got used to doing it like this now. It seems a bit odd at first because you're working on the wrong side, but it's fine. And then just start the top stitching as close as you can get to there. You don't have to be hard up against it. It's usually about an inch away where you start. And it really doesn't matter because this bit of the flap can't go anywhere. The seam inside is holding it uh, anyway. So, and you've got this, you know, really tight closed end as well. So just do a few back tacks to start. And then just making sure this is out of the way. You're not going to catch it. Make sure it's nice and flat just hold this edge so otherwise it tends to sort of pull back and start to twist just do a nice straight parallel stitch line Down. and you've got the zip end at this end so put even more in the way but the same thing just make sure you've got this still nice and straight. You can feel the zip edge inside that, you know, the plastic, uh, the coil of the zip there and that you're not going to stitch over it. And then just sew as far as you can until the, your, your foot hits this. It won't go any further because it'll just start to be in the way. And then again, just your back tacks. That is it. Snip your thread ends off. There we go. And you'll see that even though this flap is only stitched from there to there, it doesn't matter. This bit is not doing any harm. It's not it's not gaping, it's not opening up or anything. You just need this middle bit to be sewn. So if I close that now, you'll see that the 
the flap falls just nicely up against the piping edge and when the cushion's in it'll hide it even more so there we go that is cushion number two done so whichever you choose is up to you and there are even more methods but <laughs> those are probably the two most common ones that i use um, and like i say for various reasons so i hope it was useful but if you've got any questions or queries or requests for any other videos just make a comment below that's it thank you goodbye